Welcome to The Bo Show. Well, big tech strikes again. And I wanna say at the outset, this is going to keep happening. So let this be a harbinger of things to come. So let's take the first big strike. Twitter has permanently suspended the personal account of Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia for repeated violations of our COVID-19 misinformation policy. Green, in a statement following her Twitter suspension, said Twitter was an, quote, enemy to America and they can't handle the truth. That's fine. I'll show America we don't need them and it's time to defeat our enemies. Social media platforms can't stop the truth from being spread far and wide. Big tech can't stop the truth. Communist Democrats can't stop the truth, end quote. Now, before I analyze this further, let's take a look at the tweets that got MTG in trouble with Twitter. Twitter says that it permanently suspends accounts that have five or more strikes against them. Green was temporarily suspended in January of 2021 for violating Twitter's civic integrity policy, whatever that is. Saying the word integrity in the same sentence as Twitter is like saying the word kind in the same sentence as Jeffrey Dahmer. It was Green's support of QAnon that was likely part of this suspension and the Twitter purge. In May, she compared COVID-19 safety measures to the treatment of Jews and the Holocaust, which ruffled some Twitter feathers. Not exactly Twitter-pated, like in Bambi. The House of Representatives removed Green from all of her committee assignments for a number of things, including the accusation she had previously promoted racist and anti-Semitic sentiments and that she encouraged violence against Democratic colleagues before her election to Congress. Now, Green had apologized and retracted those statements, but that wasn't enough to prevent the stripping of her committee assignments, in spite of her remorse for her past support of QAnon. We know that Twitter permanently suspended Donald Trump after January 6th, so this move to ban Marjorie Taylor Greene is unsurprising. The straw that broke the Twitter camel's back for Green was a tweet expressing the sentiment that people actually cared about harm from vaccines before COVID, but now you can't say anything about it. Now, here's the irony. Twitter says that's spreading harmful misinformation. But wait a minute. If she is talking about the potential harm a vaccine can do, and we all know science says that it can, whether it's this one or some other one, isn't she merely reinforcing what the scientific community already knows and uses as disclaimers? How is expressing concern for people's health harmful? It would be the opposite of harmful, would it not? She didn't go on Twitter and make up a bunch of BS about the vaccine causing you to grow a third arm or something. She was talking about potential harm and also about the mental health aspect of what this pandemic has unduly caused. Aside from the things that she said in the past, for which she expressed remorse, she's not doing anything to hurt civic integrity. And I still find that use of words egregiously misguided. We can tell that just because Jack Dorsey has stepped aside has not made this platform any better. I've always hated Twitter. I found it to be the bowels of communication. It's where the weak come for their echo chamber. It creates false, unnatural, cowardly discourse. Artificial intelligence permits this because algorithms are programmed to curate your likes and dislikes and then amplify them. For instance, content that enrages or is largely emotional will be shared about seven to eight times as much as a cool, logical argument. So social media, like Twitter, nourishes itself on enraging interactions and content. Now logically, you would think that the content of Marjorie Taylor Greene would be gold because you could view it as outlandish or emotional, but instead they banned her. But look at Donald Trump. He was also the king of Twitter, tweeting everything from <laughs> Kofefi to exclamation marks after the word sad. Those very shareable things were shared by the droves, but because Twitter inserted itself in the political narrative, they knew they had to find a way to combat this virility. They didn't want Trump's message out there. So what did they do? They manufactured some verkakta policy about misinformation and civic integrity and use that as their barometer of what gets shared and what doesn't. That is why they don't want Trump and Green on Twitter.
Just maybe, just maybe those individuals might post something that has a kernel of truth in the emotional blanket. And they can't have that happening. The whole shroud around COVID and the vaccines has been terrible. Twitter and Facebook want to follow the CDC and WHO, but we know that those agencies were consistently wrong and have revised their policies time and time again. So the mere questioning of bad policy or science is getting you banned. And that is problematic, friends. The day that you can't question science is the day that science dies and communism thrives. Remember what Thomas Jefferson even said, question with boldness even the existence of a God, because if there be one, he must more approve of the homage of reason than that of blindfolded fear. Blindfolded fear. That is what has been the theme of the past two years. We all have a right to question things. It is our natural curiosity, maybe even our natural skepticism, but we have to be able to freely do that. Green wasn't inviting us to all go jump off a cliff, nor was Donald Trump. But Twitter thinks your life is better off without Trump and Green, and instead better off with Adam Schiff, Anthony Fauci, Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran, and the guy that lives in his basement. They did it to a sitting president and now a sitting member of Congress. The commonality is that they both belong to the same political party that questions edicts. Not one Democrat has had their privilege revoked or the media that has repeated multiple false stories that are actually harmful. Think Nick Sandman, Jesse Smollett, and Kyle Rittenhouse. Those media outlets get full shareability on Twitter. Nothing harmful there, is there? Now let's shift focus to where Big Brother, <clears throat> I mean Big Tech, struck again. Twitter banned Dr. Robert Malone days before he went on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast to discuss the government's response to COVID-19 and vaccines. Malone is an early architect and discoverer of mRNA technology. So both Malone and Rogan joined Getter, the new censorship-free platform started by former Trump advisor Jason Miller. Getter acquired 1 million subscribers in just three days. It took Twitter two years to do that. Rogan posted this, quote, just in case SHIT over at Twitter gets even dumber, I'm here now as well. Rejoice. End quote. Now remember, Rogan himself has been accused of spreading misinformation about COVID, especially when he got COVID. Remember all the people ripping on him for taking horse dewormer? So it could be just a matter of time before Twitter bans him, which is why he joined Getter. This move spawned Getter to trend on Twitter, as Rogan has 7.8 million followers on Twitter. Let's talk about Dr. Robert Malone, though, for a second and his suspension. The Atlantic's headline about him reads the following, the vaccine scientists spreading vaccine misinformation. Malone has talked about the vaccine being rushed and the public not having enough information about it to make such a critical decision. Malone discovered mRNA technology in the 80s as he injected DNA and RNA into cells of mice, which then led to the transcription of new proteins. He dropped out of grad school to go work at a pharmaceutical company called Vical, who he claims raped him of his intellectual property and prevented him from further research. Now he is getting overlooked for his contributions. As a medical doctor, he is more concerned about the adverse side effects that are getting overlooked. And his recommendation regarding the vaccine is for those at high risk for COVID, not everyone, and certainly not those under the age of 18. He himself took the Moderna vaccine after he got COVID-19, and he says that it made his maladies actually worse. Whether he gets a Nobel Prize or not, I think it's okay for a scientist and doctor to have concerns about the way his discovery is being used. We know that vaccines have led to some cases of myocarditis or heart inflammation. How pervasive that is, I don't know, but many people have had adverse reactions, and we still don't know long-term the effects on reproduction. To question that or to express concern is to be scientific. To ostracize and chastise a person who does that is unscientific and cult-like. Even the Atlantic can mark itself in that group. The Atlantic is also a firmly leftist propaganda rag, masquerading as journalism. It's just interesting to me how anyone, I mean anyone, who questions these vaccines is regarded as a heretic with a scarlet A on their chest. I think the technology is brilliant if it works properly, but 
it got rushed. So we don't really know 100%. If the guy who invented it has concerns, you should have concerns. Why would Twitter think it's smarter than Dr. Robert Malone? They actually think he's spreading misinformation when he knows more about it than the Gen Z team over at Twitter who want uniformity of thought and opinion. They want to form your opinion for you. And let this be a wake-up call to everyone. You should honestly leave Twitter. I did it long ago, and I can't tell you the freedom that I felt from it. I realized long ago what was going on over there, and I decided it wasn't good for me to be there. It's the beginning of a new year, and resolutions are abundant. Take this opportunity to figure out what is best for your self-development and your well-being. Twitter is going to continue to censor and filter and shape opinion for you. It's not the beacon of free speech. It's the opposite of that. Not only did Twitter ban Dr. Malone, but YouTube took the entire interview Joe Rogan did with him off the internet. So here you have two big tech giants deciding unanimously to just remove the speech of Joe Rogan and Dr. Malone. You don't have to agree with these two guys, but to entirely remove their dialogue is insane. Something that Malone said on the podcast with Rogan is quite interesting. Have a listen. What the heck happened in Germany in the 20s and 30s? You know, very intelligent, highly educated population, and they went barking mad. Um, and how did that happen? Um, the answer is mass formation psychosis. When you have a society that has become decoupled from each other and has free-floating anxiety, and then their attention gets focused by a leader or a series of events on one small point, just like hypnosis, they literally become hypnotized and can be led anywhere. Think about that. Mass formation psychosis, a society decoupled from each other. Mass formation psychosis was a trending search until Google shut it down manually by re-ranking search results. This is exactly what Google whistleblower Zach Voorhees told me months ago. Google re-ranks things it doesn't want you to see. Mass formation psychosis is not something invented by Dr. Malone. A clinical psychology professor named Matthias Desmet came up with it. But isn't it proving Dr. Malone's point if social media has to react to what he said by immediately pulling his interview and information off the internet? The movement has been to discredit Malone while Fauci is still out there telling you that cloth masks work. Why won't the media hold him accountable? Why do they think Fauci is somehow scientifically superior to Dr. Malone, who invented mRNA technology? Look, we could go point counterpoint all day with virologist versus epidemiologist, but the point is that we need to hear all viewpoints and theories on this because so many have been wrong. When social media companies are so entrenched in the business of removing information that they don't even know to be true or false, you have a much more insidious issue at hand. That is Twitter, YouTube, and Google working hand in hand so that you don't hear what Dr. Malone is saying. That would be supportive of the mass psychosis phenomenon. You can hypnotize people. And look, we know that Dr. Malone was not out there screaming anti-vax heresy. He was expressing concern over the speed of the approval as well as the efficacy against Omicron and the debate about whether children should get it. Because Malone calls out the illegality of a vaccine mandate, he gets shut down for it. YouTube also pulled the interview Joe Rogan had with cardiologist Dr. Peter McCullough, who has been a long proponent of hydroxychloroquine for COVID and has been critical of the way the government handled and even possibly suppressed early treatment. Now, yes, these are very controversial statements and they require a deep dive and a lot of support, but to just remove his interview entirely is something communists would do. It's critical and it should be allowed. That is what free speech is. Critical speech is protected. We need it. It helps us form our own opinions, even if we vehemently disagree with it. What if he's right? Wouldn't you want to know? We still don't have declassified documents about JFK's assassination, and we don't know all that they know about extraterrestrial life. But most of this is by design. It's being withheld. 
And if Joe Rogan can't broadcast a three hour interview with medical experts who don't march in step with everyone else, what kind of a country do we have? But I think the consequence is also telling. Rogan and Malone moved together and immediately amassed millions of followers. Truth and information are at our fingertips. And in spite of its suppression, it will punch through the noise. To question is to be free. To be silenced is to be in prison. And we have seen this time and time again. And the mainstream outlets are only going to put people on air that say the same thing. They keep putting Fauci on, who has double talked time and time again. But they prop him up like he's a scientific legend. There have been calls now for Fauci to debate Robert Malone, and I think we would all love to see that. This would be the MMA fight of our day. Two scientists going head to head to see where the science really is. If Fauci is that knowledgeable, he should put it to the test. If you Google Rogan Peter McCullough right now, the entire first page of search results are all discrediting McCullough, where people are explaining the interview and using words like debunked and unsubstantiated. Why not let people decide for themselves? This is just another way that Google, with all of its power, insidiously tries to skew your mind and make decisions for you. It's plain wrong to do that. Removing speech it disagrees with is one of the major problems of our time. This is why the media has been called the enemy of the people. It might have been said a little bit frivolously at first, but when you see the things like this happening, you realize it's not just hyperbole. Very few media can be counted on to give you the unadulterated facts. One philosophy that Dr. Malone has that I think is valid is that it is not his or our job to prove that a vaccine is unsafe. It's the vaccine manufacturer's job to prove that it's safe. I listen to most of the podcasts with Rogan and Malone, and he gets very technical and biological. It's very clear that he knows his stuff. He isn't a quack. He explains complex medical topics with great detail. For The Atlantic and other outlets to just try to discredit this guy is nothing more than blind condemnation and unscientific assassination. Malone talks about the original ban that he received that was from LinkedIn oddly enough. Bioethics and informed consent are the cornerstones of Dr. Malone's argument. He just wants people to see risk-benefit analysis, but no discussion of risks are allowed, so they can't be discussed. And among Dr. Malone's most explosive claims is that the government deliberately prevented access to treatments like hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin early on in the pandemic, which caused hundreds of thousands of unnecessary deaths. Malone references a state in India called Uttar Pradesh, which has a massive, poor, dense population. In August of 2020, their state health department approved the prophylactic and therapeutic use of ivermectin in its population, which kept both case rate and death rates extremely low. I found evidence of this on the small news website, The Indian Express. But if you go to PolitiFact, Okay, first results on the page, they will shoot that right down, claiming there is no scientific basis. This is amazing, folks. Causally, it worked. Yet you have so many websites jumping to shoot that good news down. They do the same with Joe Rogan and Aaron Rodgers, who took ivermectin. They're called whack jobs. Also, adverse side effects from the vaccine are two to fourfold if you have had a previous COVID infection. Did you know this? Probably not because the CDC is just telling you you're a bad person if you don't get it. That's all Malone is saying. Where is the information about risk versus benefit? Were people allowed to die without access to life-saving treatment by cheap generics? This may be the most pivotal crux of Dr. Malone's argument. Listen up. And so this was the response of the Western nations um, to, to build this new structure called the Trusted News Initiative that would survey all information about um, elections and prevent the intrusion of foreign information into the democratic process and creation of undue influence by foreign actors. Shortly after it was created, it was, um, there was an awareness in the pharmaceutical industry that this could be used to um, address a a particular devil challenge that they had, 
which was the pejorative label anti-vaxxers. That's also been deployed against climate spe- skeptics. Okay, so anti-vaxxers, you'll recall, is the, the label that is used to, to basically take anybody out that is raising any concerns about vaccine safety. Um, it's, it's the pejorative that's applied, and it makes it really easy for the media to basically um, take off the table anybody that's saying something that is contrary to the interests of the really the vaccine industry. Right. Um, so there was a decision that this same toolkit, this same integrated um, international media and high-tech um, organization led by the BBC would be pivoted to resisting vaccine misinformation and disinformation. And uh, they put out a proud press announcement last fall that this is what they're going to do. And um, they defined these things, misinformation and disinformation, as anything which was going to lead to vaccine hesitancy and which was contrary to the official statements of the World Health Organization or the respective national health organizations. So if CDC says the world is flat, then the world is flat. And there will be no discussion about whether or not the world is flat. I'm using, obviously, an ex- right. a, a simplified, um, silly example. Um, so whatever the CDC or Tony Fauci or Tedros, etc., says is truth by definition. This trusted news initiative, this is a weapon to bludgeon anyone that does not believe or that merely questions folks. This is our health we are talking about here. We have a right to question everything. That's why we ask doctors for second opinions. I find Dr. Malone's testimony compelling and certainly thought provoking. It is worthy of our consideration, not worthy of removal by big tech companies. But now I, and hopefully you too, understand the why why they removed his words and his Twitter account. Free discussions like this are necessary for us to make better decisions. By removing the interview, Google, YouTube, and Twitter are making very conscious errors and intrusions into the free flow of medical information. Everything about this pandemic and this virus must be questioned, especially its origins. But the WHO has tried to bury that too. Heard any more about lab leaks recently? Doubt it. As Americans, we have to stand up for freedom of speech and information. And I know that I have viewers watching from around the world, and you too should demand it from your own governments and your press. Don't be intimidated. Stand tall. Stand firm. Stand free. I'm Bo, and that's the show.